Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Ferre and I'm a fourth grade teacher in Maryland. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a quiz in Google Forms that will be graded automatically and will allow you to import the grades into Google Classroom in one click. So in order to start, you do need to create a new Google Forms and there's a few different ways you can do that. In Google Drive, you can click on new, go down to more and then select Google Forms or in your browser, you can type in forms.new, which I will link for you in the description box. So you have a blank form and we're gonna start by actually customizing the theme. If you click on the paint palette up at the top, it's going to open up your theme options. You can actually add a header image which will go above where the title is. Now I already created a header image just in PowerPoint. I created a slide that was four inches tall and 16 inches wide, added some text and added an image and saved it as a PNG. It's very simple to do, but you can also use an image that you just grabbed from Google Google, or you cannot have an image at all. But in order to add one, you can select choose image and then you can go to upload and you can browse from the documents on your computer. So I'm gonna choose my Google form header, click open. And then once it uploads, it's going to ask you to kind of crop and choose what area of the image you want. Mine is already good to go, so I'm gonna click on done. And that's going to add the header up at the top above where my form title is. Once you add that header, Google Forms is going to pull colors from that image, but you don't have to use those colors. If you click on the plus sign, you can actually use a custom color. I'm gonna come over to kind of where the purpley colors are, and I'm just gonna choose that one, and I'm going to select add and that's going to change the color of your overall form. You can also change the background color, which are different shades of the main Google form color. You can also change the font style, but I typically leave mine at basic. So I'm now going to X out and I'm gonna go ahead and give my form a title. I'm gonna create an example quiz that would be used for a math check for understanding or exit ticket, but you can do this with any subject area. I'm going to title my form just multiplication. If you want, you can add a form description, but you don't have to. Now, at any time, if you want to see what the form will look like when students are taking it, you can click up on the eye icon, which is actually preview, and it will open up the form and show you what it will look like. Now, in order to make this Google form into a quiz, we need to go to the settings. So we're gonna click on the gear icon, and this will open up three different categories of settings, general, presentation, and quizzes. In general, you can choose to have it collect email addresses. I usually have that selected. You can also choose if you want people to be sent a response receipt, but I typically don't worry about that. If you want to use this with your Google Classroom and allow it to import the grades into Google Classrooms, you do need to limit to one response. If you want students to take the quiz multiple times, that's fine, but it's not going to allow you to directly import scores into your Google Classroom, so that's a choice you have to make. You can also choose if you want respondents to be able to edit after submit or see a summary chart and text responses. I typically don't select those. Moving over to presentation, you can choose if you want it to show a progress bar. If this is going to be a longer quiz, that's typically helpful for students. You can also choose if you want it to shuffle question order, which would have students getting the questions in different orders, but I typically don't select either of those. You also can choose a confirmation message. So when students finish taking the quiz, this is what will appear. So you could say something like, great job on this quiz. Be sure to check on Google Classroom for your grade. Now, this is the most important part. I'm gonna come over to quizzes and I'm going to select make this a quiz. Again, I have several options that I can choose. I can release the grade immediately after submission. So if it is mostly multiple choice, true false type questions, this is a great option because then students can get their feedback right away. However, if you are going to include paragraph type responses that have to be manually graded, then you would have to select later upon manual review. But for this example, I'm just going to be using multiple choice and true false type questions so I can leave the release grade at immediate and then you can choose whether respondents can see missed questions, correct answers, and or point values. Once you are done getting the settings you want, you can select save. 
Now, because I am using my personal Google account, you will notice that it added in this area for email address and it made it a required question. However, when I use this on my school account, it automatically collects my students' email addresses. I do not have to worry about them entering it themselves. It's automatically doing that because they are signed in. Now I'm ready to start adding questions. So in order to keep this easy, we're just gonna do some basic multiple choice. So to start, I could do what is is three times four. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in their multiple choice options. So I'm gonna have seven, 10, 12, and 15. Now because this is a quiz and I want it to automatically grade, I do need to come down to the answer key. This is going to allow me to show which answer choice is correct and assign point values. So I'm going to select 12 since that is the correct answer and I'm gonna make this one just one point. I can either type it in or use the arrows and if I want to, I can add answer feedback. That is not required, but if you want to provide students with feedback after they answer, you can do that. Once you are done, click done. Let's add in a true false type question. Now, before I go on to the next question, I do wanna make sure that I make this question required so that students have to answer it. Now to make things easier, I can actually click on this duplicate button and it will automatically duplicate all the settings that I just had. So I could create another multiple choice question like what is six times seven? And again, I want to put in my answer choices. So let's do 13, 42, 45, and 36. So in order to change the correct answer, I'm going to go back to the answer key, and this time I'm going to select 42, and I'm going to unselect 45 and click done. Now I can also create other types of questions. So for example, if I click add question, I'm going to make this one a checkbox, and I'm going to make it a true false. So I'm going to do true or false, two times 10 is 12, and it will actually give suggestions so I can click add all to automatically make them true or false. I'm going to go to my answer key and I'm going to select false. I'm going to make this one one point and click done, and I'm going to make it required. Now you can also add images to questions. So I'm going to click add question, and I'm going to select the image button and I'm going to upload a file from my computer. I have an array image, so I'm going to open this, and this is going to add the image into the question. So now I can say what multiplication equation is represented by this array. Now I can add in my answer choices, so I could do four times three equals 12, four times eight equals 32, four times five equals 20, four times four equals 16. I'm going to select my answer key, select the correct answer, change this to one point and click done. You will notice as you start adding questions up at the top, the total points will automatically change. So again, I'm going to make this one required. Now you can continue this process and make as many questions as you want. I do wanna show you just another thing that you could consider adding in. I'm going to click on add question, but this time I'm going to select file upload. Now this works really, really well if students are completing math work where they need to show their work. Students could actually take a picture of their work and then upload it so you can see their thinking. This isn't required obviously, but it is an option for you. So I'm going to select continue. And then here I might type submit a picture of your work. Now I can choose to only allow certain file types. So for example, I could choose only image or maybe PDF, but you may keep it open to all of those options for your students. You can also select how many files students can be able to upload. So you could do one, five, or 10. I might do five because my students might show their work on a separate piece of paper for each question. You can also choose the maximum file size. Keep in mind, these files are going to be stored in your Google Drive. I might make it 100 megabytes. And then finally, you can choose how much you want this form to be able to accept. So as students start adding in their files, they're saved in your Google Drive and you might want to limit that space. So if you want to change it, you can just click change and then you can select one gigabyte, 
10 gigabytes, 100 gigabytes, or a terabyte. Now, if you wanted to, you could assign points to this question. So under answer key, you could choose how many points you want it to be. However, this would require you to manually go in and grade it. So you could also just leave it at zero and you can choose whether you want it to be required or not. Now I'm gonna show you what this would look like from the student point of view. So I can go to preview mode and it's going to open up the form so I can clearly see the questions here. It communicates how many points each one is worth and then at the end they can submit. So I'm going to go ahead and share this out on Google Classroom. Now in Google Forms I can go to send and then I can click on the link and I can actually copy and paste this link. However, I actually suggest doing it a different way if you're sharing through Google Classroom. I suggest going to the create button, choosing assignment, and I could put multiplication check for understanding. I can add instructions if needed. And then I'm going to add in that form. I'm gonna click on add and I'm going to select Google Drive and then this is the quiz I just created. So I'm gonna click it and then click add, and this automatically adds it to that assignment. I do wanna change the point value to match however many points the quiz is. So for this one, it was four, so I'm going to put in four, and then I can add a due date and a topic if I want, and I'm going to click assign. Now, once your students have taken the quiz, you can click on the assignment and then click on view assignment. This is going to show you student work. Now, because I'm using my personal Google account and not my school account, it does look a little bit different. I'm going to insert a small screen recording of my school account so you can see where the import grades button is. Because I'm using my personal account, I don't have that option, but once you click that button, it's going to automatically import their grades and it is a huge time saver. Now, because I don't have that option on my end, I can go in and grade Billy's quiz that I made him take and in order to view his responses I can actually go back to the form and I can click on responses at the top this will allow me to see a summary or I can view it by question or I can view it by individual and I can even export a spreadsheet if I click on this Google Sheets icon right up here this is going to create a new spreadsheet in order for me to view the responses so I can click on create and this is going to automatically save in my Google Drive so now I can see the scores. I made him take it twice and I also took it myself, but I'm now able to see the answers to all of the questions. So I can tell that he got 100%. So I'm going to enter that score on Google Classroom. So in Google Classroom, I'm just going to click type in four. If I want, I can add a private comment. And then once I am done grading, I can return it to the students. Or if you have it set automatically, they can view their grade as soon as they're done. Now there's one last thing that I do wanna show you. So I'm gonna go back to my Google Drive. So you can see I have the Google Form quiz I created, I have the spreadsheet of responses, and then I have this folder. This has all of those images that were uploaded. So if I click, I can see the images that were uploaded. Now I recommend moving all three of these files. So the folder, the quiz and the spreadsheet all into a single folder. Personally, I've actually created an e-learning folder for this time, and then I have a folder for every subject, and I would move those into the correct subject. So that is it for creating a quiz in Google Forms that will automatically grade itself and allow you to import grades into Google Classroom. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up, share it out with your teacher friends. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments, and I will do my best to get back to you. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and the notification bell so you do not miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to push positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.